Welcome to section one of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing herpes simplex virus one and herpes simplex virus two. For simplicity, I'll refer to these as HSV1 and HSV2. You can see both of them right here. These are kind of a beast, but super high yield for step one. So I promise you that spending the time on this video and memorizing this information will be worth its weight in gold. This story is all about an epic battle between Hercules and Zeus. Hercules sounds like herpes, which should help you remember that this image is all about herpes simplex virus, or HSV. Okay, before we go much further, let's lay down a few ground rules for viruses in general. First, just like in our bacteria videos, we'll make all of the DNA virus images have a lot of dark colors, like blue and purple. Our RNA virus videos will have a lot of warm colors, like red, yellow, and orange. So dark colors for DNA viruses, and warm colors for RNA viruses. Next, assume that all of our viruses are enveloped unless we indicate otherwise. A non-enveloped or naked virus will be indicated by a naked person in our videos. So if there aren't any naked people, then assume that the virus is enveloped. Finally, assume that all the viruses are single-stranded unless we show something in the image that indicates otherwise. Double-stranded viruses will usually be represented with two prominent things that are parallel to one another, just like a double-stranded genome. If we return to this overview image, you can see that all DNA viruses are double-stranded except parvovirus. Most of the RNA viruses are single-stranded, so we won't have any symbols to indicate this. It should just be assumed. All right, with these basic ground rules, let's continue discussing HSV. Like I just mentioned, dark colors represent DNA viruses. So the purple blue sky in this image should help you remember that HSV1 and HSV2 are both DNA viruses. Next, you can see that Zeus has sent his loyal snakes after Hercules. The two snakes can be seen coming out of the temple in the background and are moving directly parallel to one another. These two parallel lines should help you remember that HSV is double-stranded. Next, notice that there is a pathway that goes in a straight line to Zeus's temple. You can see Zeus over here with his hammer. The straight line is here to help you remember that HSV is linear. All right, everything we've talked about so far is true of both HSV1 and HSV2. Now let's focus on HSV1. To help you compartmentalize this, you should know that most of the information in the image will be about HSV1 scattered throughout the image. Later, we'll introduce some more characters to the scene on the right bottom side of the image by the tree right here. And all of this information will be regarding HSV2. So now notice that we've shown some mist to the scene to add some cinematic effects to this epic battle. The fog or mist was used a lot in our bacteria videos and is here to help you remember that HSV1 is transmitted through respiratory droplets. Next, look closely at Hercules' belt. You can see that he likes to wear gems, so he has a belt with three gems on it. The number three should make you think of Tri, and the gems should make you think of Geminal. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that HSV1 remains latent in the trigeminal ganglion. This is an image depicting many of the nerves in the face, and you can see the trigeminal nerves emanating from the trigeminal ganglion, which is right here. As you can see, a ganglion is a cluster of nerve cells, so ganglia are often grossly noticeable as a swelling in a nerve. It's also very high yield for you to know that this is a sensory ganglion. So HSV1 remains latent in the trigeminal ganglion, which is a collection of sensory neurons. All right, now notice that we've added a basset hound to the image. Basset hounds sounds like Bechet syndrome, and should help you remember that HSV1 may precipitate Bechet syndrome. This is a type of vasculitis characterized by genital and oral ulcers, uveitis, and erythema nodosum. Now let's take a close look at Hercules' satchel. Notice that he has brought along some carrots and ginger just in case he gets hungry. Ginger sounds like gingivo which should help you remember that HSV1 can cause gingivostomatitis. This is a condition characterized by ulcers affecting the gingiva and sometimes the surrounding structures, such as the lips and the hard palate. This is an image of gingivostomatitis. As you can see, this patient has an ulcer of the gingiva, as indicated by the circle. The carrots seen coming out of his satchel sound like carido, and should help you remember that HSV1 can cause keratoconjunctivitis. Keratitis just means inflammation of the cornea and conjunctivitis means inflammation of the conjunctiva. So together, keratoconjunctivitis means inflammation of the cornea and the conjunctiva. This is an image of viral keratoconjunctivitis. As you can see, the conjunctiva is clearly inflamed, but the cornea can't be very well visualized unless special dyes are used. So this can be a bit harder to see. Regardless, this patient was confirmed to have viral keratoconjunctivitis. Okay, did you notice that Hercules was lifting up a bloody finger into the air? Well, this is because Zeus sent the snakes to attack him, which did just that. They bit his finger. Now his finger is all bloody, and Hercules is lifting it up into the air in disbelief. In any case, the wound on the finger should make you think of herpetic whitlow, which is a painful dermatological condition associated with HSV1 that affects the fingers. This is an image of herpetic whitlow. 
As you can see, this patient appears to have several vesicles on an erythematous base that is isolated to the finger right here. Typically, herpetic whitlow presents as a single vesicle or a cluster of vesicles on the finger as shown in the image. As a result of biting Hercules, the lips of these snakes have become quite bloody. The blood on the lips should help you think of the lips and help you remember that HSV1 can cause herpes labialis, which is an infection that affects the lips. This is an image of herpes labialis, and as you can see, it's characterized by a painful vesicular lesion that occurs on or adjacent to the lip. Now notice that the snakes didn't only get his finger, they also bit his arm. Look at all those red bite marks. Anyway, the bite marks on his arm should help you remember that HSV1 can also cause erythema multiforme, which is a distinctive rash that results in target-like lesions on the skin. This is an image of erythema multiforme affecting an infant. As you can see, the rash results in erythematous target-like lesions. This is a self-limiting condition and typically only lasts a few days. As revenge, notice that Hercules is stabbing one of the snakes in the eye with a sword, causing it to bleed uncontrollably. The red bloody eye should help you remember the red appearing retina and that HSV1 can cause retinitis. All right, now notice that we've added a bunch of craters in the ground. These craters formed as a result of Zeus's anger. Anytime he becomes upset, he causes a lightning bolt to strike the ground, causing the craters to form. Anyway, the craters in the ground should make you think of craters or ulcers in the esophagus. So HSV1 can cause ulcerated esophagitis. This is an endoscopic image of HSV causing ulcerated esophagitis. As you can see, the ulcers are somewhat superficial and occur all over the esophagus. You can see an ulcer, for example, right here. During one of these temper tantrum episodes, Zeus accidentally made a lightning bolt strike the temple causing it to catch fire. The temple on fire should make you think of inflammation of the temporal lobes of the brain. So HSV1 can cause temporal lobe encephalitis. This is an MRI of temporal lobe encephalitis. As you can see, there is pretty obvious enhancement of the temporal lobes right here. All right, now that we've discussed HSV1, let's move on to discuss HSV2. As I mentioned earlier, the characters on the right bottom side of the image by the tree right here will be regarding HSV2. This guy is one of Hercules' helpers, but he lost one of his shoes, so now he's sitting on the ground waiting until someone can bring him a new shoe. Anyway, notice that this guy is wearing our scarlet letter S symbol, which is to help you remember that unlike HSV1, HSV2 is sexually transmitted. It also may be helpful to think of this guy being closer to the ground, which should help you remember that HSV2 mostly affects the parts of the body lower to the ground, for example, the genitals. Before we get there, also notice that this guy is holding a torch up so Hercules can see better and effectively fight off these evil snakes. The torch is here to help you remember that herpes is a torches infection and can cause neonatal herpes. While HSV1 and HSV2 can both cause neonatal herpes, it's most commonly associated with HSV2 as the baby passes through the birth canal of an infected mother, which is why we've shown the guy representing HSV2 holding the torch rather than Hercules. This is an image of neonatal herpes on the scalp of a newborn, as you can see by the yellow arrows. As the guy was holding up the torch, he became a bit overly focused on the snake fight and accidentally caught his clothes on fire. Now you can see that his crotch is beginning to go up in flames. This is here to help you remember that HSV2 can cause painful vesicular genital lesions. This is an image of the characteristic vesicular and ulcerative lesions of herpes affecting the female genitalia. Now notice that we've added little green beads to this guy's tunic ruffles. These resemble the lymphatic system, and the fact that they are by his inguinal area should help you remember that HSV2 can cause inguinal lymphadenopathy. Looks like he must be pretty distracted because now the torch has caught his hat on fire. Just like in our other images, hats are used to represent the meninges. So this guy's hat on fire should help you remember that compared to HSV1, HSV2 is more commonly associated with meningitis. As the servant sat on the ground, you can see that he set down a sack of weapons right next to him. These are the weapons he carries for Hercules in case he needs a new sword or something. In any case, sack sounds like sacral, which should help you remember that HSV2 remains dormant in the sacral neural ganglia. All right, now that we've covered the clinical features, let's move on to discuss diagnosis. You can see that we've shown Zeus using a powerful three-chained weapon to strike down Hercules' opposing army. Just like in our other videos, the three chains are used to represent polymerase chain reaction or PCR. So HSV can be diagnosed using PCR. If a patient has a herpes skin lesion, a swab can be obtained and then PCR can be performed. If there is neurological involvement, such as meningitis or temporal lobe encephalitis, then PCR of the CSF should be performed. This method of diagnosing HSV is considered the gold standard, but other older techniques still commonly show up on step one. For example, scrapings of the lesions can be performed on patients with active lesions, and a special stain or smear, known as the Zank smear, can be used to detect multinucleated giant cells. Our symbol for the Zank smear is Zeus, because these sound somewhat similar. 
Also think of Zeus holding up his giant, powerful hammer for multinucleated giant cells. So HSV can be diagnosed with a Zank smear, which reveals multinucleated giant cells. This is an image of a Zank smear. As you can see, there are three multinucleated giant cells in the center of the image right here. This multinucleated process is thought to occur as the virus rapidly replicates in the host cell nucleus, which results in abnormal cellular division. In addition to his chain, notice that Zeus has now used his powers over the sky to cause a cyclone to form. The cyclone was meant to destroy the soldiers attempting to destroy him, but it accidentally picked up a stray cow. The cow is here to help you remember Cowdery A inclusions. These are eosinophilic inclusion bodies associated with HSV that may be seen under the microscope. This is an image of Cowdery bodies within hepatocytes. You can see the eosinophilic inclusion, for example, right here. Okay, the cyclone itself also has a meaning. Cyclone sounds like acyclovir, which should help you remember that HSV can be treated with acyclovir. Now we've added a violet-colored cyclone. Violet cyclone sounds like valacyclovir, which is here to help you remember that valacyclovir can also be used. Finally, we've shown another servant here foolishly attempting to put out the fire caused by the person holding the torch. Unfortunately, he has forgotten that fire likes oxygen and he's providing the flame with more fuel. You can also see that his powerful effort has caused a little mini cyclone to form. In any case, the fan causing a little mini cyclone to form should make you think of famcyclovir, which is another medication that can be used to treat HSV. Fan cyclone, famcyclovir. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 14-year-old boy is brought to the emergency department by his mother due to confusion that began earlier today. His mother states that he became lost at school even though he has been at the same school for years. On physical examination, he is disoriented to time, place, and person. An MRI of the brain reveals necrosis and hemorrhage of the temporal lobes bilaterally. Which of the following is most likely responsible for this patient's condition? A. DNA virus double-stranded linear naked. B. DNA virus single-stranded linear naked. C. DNA virus double-stranded linear enveloped. D. RNA virus single-stranded linear naked positive sense or E, RNA virus, single-stranded, linear, enveloped, positive sense. Okay, these questions are kind of pesky, but step one often likes to test you this way. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this boy has encephalitis. We can deduce this based on his confusion and an MRI that has revealed bilateral necrosis and hemorrhage of the temporal lobes. This is a finding unique to HSV1, so the correct answer is C, DNA virus, double-stranded, linear, enveloped. From the image, recall that the dark colors should help you remember that HSV is a DNA virus. The two parallel snakes right here represent that it's double-stranded. The linear path to the temple represents that it's linear. And the fact that there are no naked people in the image should help you remember that it's not a naked virus, so it must be an enveloped virus. So again, HSV is a DNA virus, double-stranded, linear, and enveloped. A is incorrect. This is describing adenovirus, which is not associated with temporal lobe encephalitis. It's more commonly associated with rhinorrhea, pharyngitis, and conjunctivitis. B is describing parvovirus B19, which is the only single-stranded DNA virus. It's associated with erythema infectiosum, which is a dermatologic condition and is not typically associated with neurological deficits. So B is incorrect. D is describing picornoviruses, such as Coxsackie virus. Coxsackie virus can cause meningitis, but not temporal lobe encephalitis. E is describing flaviviruses, such as St. Louis encephalitis or West Nile virus. And while these can both cause encephalitis, they're unlikely to cause bilateral temporal lobe damage. So E is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about HSV.